Welcome to the Cherry Becker Tax Beat, a conversation about tax that matters. Welcome to this edition of the Cherry Becker Tax Beat Podcast. The Employee Retention Credit, or ERC, is in the news again. The IRS announced a voluntary disclosure program in December 2023. This program is for employers who filed ERC claims and received refunds or credits that they are not actually entitled to. IRS is reaching out to employers who may have been pushed into filing erroneous claims by one of the many ERC mills that proliferated over the last three years. Uh, Joining in today's conversation, once again, is Marty Caramon, partner and leader of our tax credits and incentives advisory practice, uh, and and in particular, our uh, ERC leader. He uh, pays a lot of attention to ERC. And so how are you doing today, Marty? I'm doing very well. Today I'm in uh, I'm in New York City today and it's a it's a rainy day, but I'm happy to be talking about ERC. And how many are they shutting schools down in Brooklyn like they are in Virginia and North Carolina? Do you Not know that in South Carolina? Not that South, they're shutting schools down in South Carolina. Yeah, yeah. Maryland. I mean, yeah, it's I'm looking out. I mean, it's I mean, it's kind of raining, but they shut all the schools down today. So anyway, we We'll talk about the next time we get a little uh, a forecast of snow for an inch. But, uh, all right. Yeah. All right. As always, joining me, my partner in crime, Sarah McGregor from Greenville. Miss McGregor, how's life treating you? Uh, life is good. We've had a lot of rain over the last uh, 12 to 14 hours. And um, so it's a good day to be a duck or an accountant. I'll pick an accountant. All right. Well, how about a Wolverine? Yes. Who do you like in the, uh, in the national championship game? Well, well, um, seeing as how it was WVM and I graduated from William and Mary, I liked all of the uh, advertising that showed that W&M were playing. Um, so that's all I could think about that. But I was happy that one of those two teams won the national championship last night. All right. All right. Very good. Very good. All righty, let's, let's go ahead and hit it. Uh, just a little bit of background. Uh, the ERC came in in the CARES Act of 2020. It was seen as a great boon to, uh, to employers. I mean, the philosophy behind it was to ha- keep employers paying their employees and ha- have the government help finance that pay, even if the uh, business was struggling because of COVID-related issues. There have been numerous refinements, both legislatively and administratively, to ERC as we've gone along. Uh, along the way, this this business has gotten into an area that we sometimes see in tax incentives areas where there are good players in the industry and there are bad players. And unfortunately, the bad players have gotten a lot of attention and a lot of press. Uh, not the least of which is the IRS uh, commissioner coming in and actively putting a moratorium on uh, processing ERC claims. Um, that's something, you know, we've never never quite seen, I don't think, and we still don't quite know when the IRS will start processing these claims. Uh, in the interim, the uh, IRS has also introduced some new programs for, for employers to reconsider what they have done. So uh, that's kind of the lay of the land that we are in, um, and the IRS continues to send out scare tactic letters, I would say, uh, to some degree, disallowing claims. So, Marty, give us a rundown. Give us the rundown, lay of the land. All right, here's the rundown. So why don't we level set again and talk about what ERC is and and the periods to which it applies. So now... After all the changes that have happened with the ERC over time, it sits in the law where there are four employee retention credits. There is one specific to the time period of March 13th, 2020 through the end of 2020. And then there are three more employee retention credits, uh, one for each of the first three quarters of 2021. Essentially, the program um, provides a benefit to companies that kept uh, employees employed. Basically, it, it's it based off the amount you paid your employees. Um, but to the extent you as a business or as an organization were 
harmed by COVID in one of two ways. One, to the extent you could show that you had some significant decline in your gross receipts, that being a 50% decline in any quarter of 20 compared to that same quarter of 19, or a uh, more than 20% decline in any of the first three quarters of 21 compared to those same quarters of 2019. That's a pretty uh, easy test to measure. You just need to look at what your overall gross receipts are in each of those quarters, compare it back to 19, and you're an automatic qualifier. Essentially, the government orders specific to COVID-19 that are limiting commerce, travel, and group meetings um, are deemed to be um, affecting your customer base. And that is what uh, is why the significant decline in gross receipts test exists. If you don't satisfy that, there is another way to qualify, which is to show that you as an organization were directly impacted um, in a, a more than nominal portion of your business was directly impacted by one of these COVID-19 orders. Um, and so that is the area where I think we have seen a lot of these ERC mills proliferate, where they have talked, or the IRS is at least of the opinion that they have talked many taxpayers into the fact that they are qualified um, with very little documentation at times around exactly what order was affecting them and how it affected a more than nominal piece of the business. So I think that's the, what the IRS is concerned about here. They're really concerned about taxpayers that they feel may have been duped into claiming an employee retention credit based on some bad advice. Um, and so what they've done is pull together a few programs to allow employers to essentially give the money back. And so um, I'll stop there and see if you have any questions, and then we can just keep talking about it. All right. So, Marty, following the IRS's moratorium saying, hey, we're not we're going to stop processing claims for a period of time. Uh, they introduced uh, a couple of programs for employers who may have filed an invalid claim like you were talking about. Um, the first program <laughs> was to help allow employers to withdraw a claim. You want to talk about that program? Yeah, I like to call the two programs. The first one is for those that didn't cash a check. And then the voluntary disclosure program was for those that did cash a check. So um, the the first IRS program to withdraw came out a little over a month after the uh, moratorium began, which began September 14th of 2023. So on, on October 24th, the IRS came out with a program that allowed uh, taxpayers to withdraw a, a, a um, basically a claim that they had made um, to the extent uh, they did. They had filed the 941, and it was only for ERC. It wasn't for anything else. Um, and they had not yet gotten the money back, or they had gotten the money back but hadn't hadn't yet cashed the check. And so, um, in that case, the IRS um, provided the ability, basically, for employers just just to take the 941 and um, that they had the 941X essentially on which they had filed the amended claim for the, for the ERC. And in the left margin of it, just write withdrawn on it, um, have an authorized person sign and date it, and then um, basically fax it back to the IRS uh, to alert the IRS that they are withdrawing their claim. Um, they hadn't gotten any cash, so no harm, no foul, essentially in that, in that sense, um, and, and no penalties or interest associated with it because the, they're basically telling the IRS not to process it. Right. And so the second one, those that did get a check and cash it, there's a new program that came out late in December for them, uh, for employers to consider. Let's let's talk about that program. Yeah, I think that's the most important program that's come out. And I think it's specifically designed and I think it's very, very taxpayer favorable as well. So, for example, um, it allows those that have received the employee retention credit. And as you said, those are that have cashed the check basically to repay that employee retention credit amount that they've gotten minus 20 percent. And um, they also, as a result, have to cooperate uh, the, the taxpayer with any request from the IRS for more information. And I think that's specifically to regarding like what uh, provider they worked with is probably what the IRS is going to be asking about and then sign a closing agreement as well, um, indicating that they that they basically um, are of the opinion that they did not qualify for the employee retention credit. And this minus 20 percent is the most interesting because many of the providers, especially what the IRS will be de deemed, <laughs> what the IRS has deemed an ERC mill, um, are charging contention fees anywhere from 15 to we'll say 30 percent I've seen out there. And so they pick 20 percent as amount to allow uh, the taxpayer to more easily pay back the amount and not have to pay back the amount they paid to the mill with whom they worked. 
Um, and so it's very taxpayer favorable. It only exists until March 22nd, 2024. So taxpayers, if they are of the opinion that they weren't entitled to an employer retention credit and they got the money, they have uh, until the 22nd of March in order to essentially give it back and apply it back to the IRS. So this, uh, so if an employer got a, uh, a refund check of a million dollars for their ERC claim, they deposit it, um, they would have roughly from the time this was announced until March 22nd, roughly a 90 day period to think about paying back, but they wouldn't have to pay back the whole million. They could pay back just the 800,000 uh, with the expectation that other 200 went to pay off the provider or whoever helped them. Uh, that sounds like very reasonable. They're just having to pay back the money that they have in pocket uh, or that they were able to hang on to out of out of the deal um, at the end of the day. And then they'd close out and say, yep, we're, we're done here. Uh, does it work for every employer? It works for the following. Basically, um, you have to show that you're eligible for it by um, showing that you did claim the ERC, that you now believe that you're entitled to zero, um, not a portion, but basically the whole amount. Um, you have to um, not be under an employment tax exam. You have to not be under criminal investigation, and you have to have not yet received a letter or notice uh, from the IRS disallowing the ERC. So it, it isn't a reactionary thing to what the IRS may have uh, written to you about denying your claim. It is really uh, something that's, we'll call it a proactive or intended to be proactive on the part of the taxpayer um, to basically voluntarily disclose that they don't believe that they actually were entitled. And I've actually run into some taxpayers with whom we didn't work on the original filing, but have come to us um, and have been actually pretty interested in this program that they found out because they weren't really sure that they were entitled to all the money they received. Well, that kind of segs to you know, my next question is, I'm an employer sitting out here and I gotten my money. What should I be thinking about uh, before participating in one of these programs or evaluating my participation in these programs? Yeah, I would say number one is um, just consider whether or not you as the employer qualified under the significant declining gross receipts test or under the um, we'll call it the government order test. Uh, if you didn't have a significant decline in gross receipts, Take a second look and make sure that it's well documented and that you can show that your business was partially shut down um, and that you have documentation to prove that. Um, if not, and, and the IRS has actually come out with some examples that they see as like bad practices by some of these ERC meals, which are just to cite things like um, CDC or OSHA guidance, which had been enacted long before COVID and continues to this day, um, basically to qualify just everybody. So. If it's just CDC or OSHA guidance that you're relying upon as a um, as your government order, take a second look, reach out to someone like Cherry Beckert so that we can do an evaluation for you to see if you are truly an eligible employer for purposes um, of the employee retention credit. So you have time, take a look, and um, now's the time to look at it more than any other. And also, I would say don't spend the money um, right now and, and keep it around until until you make that determination. Uh, so uh, we talked about these two. If you are there, you said there were four credits, one for 2020 and then three in 2021. Uh, is it at all or nothing? All the credits are deemed to be zero or uh, all are good? Or can you can you apply for uh, one quarter or one year and not another? You can look at each credit independently for this per for this uh, for this program. So you can look at yeah, the 2020 credit as one thing and then you can look as well at 2021, which are quarters one, two, and three of 2021. So you have you have four different potential checks that you have may received or, or ERC amounts specific to four different programs. And those are the ones for which you would um you would make the uh potential disclosure and 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 request to give the cash back. Mm -hmm. What what other options are available for an employer that um is concerned about their ERC claim but doesn't necessarily fit squarely into either one of these two uh two programs? Um First, first piece of advice I would say in that particular thing is, is kind of what I said before. Make sure if you haven't yet, hold on to the cash. Um, and, and, and again, take a second look. Um, evaluate with your trusted advisor whether you think you do or do not qualify. You can still uh, make another amendment to um, give the cash back. 
uh, just file another form 941X in order to do that, you will be subject to at least interest. We'll see. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how the penalties may work in this particular case, how the IRS may view that. But with, at the very least, there will be an interest charge. Um, but at the same time, you will also be able to, we'll call it, um, unamend the income tax returns that you uh, previously amended in order to reduce your wage deductions by the amount of that ERC. Um, the other thing that's interesting as well, though, is uh, with respect to the voluntary disclosure program, even if you hold on to that 20% and you didn't pay it to an ERC mill, you still get to hang on to it. And um, essentially, there's no requirement after that to reduce your deductions by the amount that you held on to. So if you found that you uh, didn't pay an ERC mill and you got something to which you're not entitled, you may be able to hang on to 20% of that cash and give it back to the IRS. It's It's a very... Um, one size fits all program where they're not doing a specific determination for each taxpayer. So each each person may be a little bit different in terms of what situation they're in after they give the cash back. Okay, well, that was more complicated <laughs> than, I thought, <laughs> than I thought. But anyway, let's let's just change the direction just a little bit. It's related, but not directly, so to say, so to speak. But, uh, um, you know, we have been a leader in the ERC space. You have been a leader in that. Um, we have filed lots and lots of ERC claims, and uh, now we're seeing IRS audit ERC claims. Uh, we've seen them ask for more information in the process of the claim. What is your overall assessment? Have you seen any surprises or uh, any other, any other uh, wisdom to share with our listeners? Ali, I haven't seen too many surprises. I think we've been pretty prepared for what we may or may not have seen. But what we have seen is, is the same stuff. The IRS has been somewhat consistent in what they asked for, which is a basic um, understanding of what government orders applied, how long they were in process, a copy of those government orders. And if, if alternatively, you're under the gross receipts test, a full accounting of those gross receipts uh, so that they can take a look at it. And then they want to also look at your payroll um, journals as well so they can understand uh, that there was no, shall we say, double counting or that the amount of employees that you have somewhat is associated with the same amount that were reported originally on the 941. Um, I haven't seen them particularly be overly aggressive in this case to the extent, because I think we've worked with reputable taxpayers. We've established um, a good, uh, I don't know, process in terms of understanding who may or may not qualify. Right. And we probably worked with over 1,200 independent clients on this, and to date, we've only seen about five inquiries <laughs> from the okay. service directly. Right, good. Good. I expect more to come because yeah. they're going to get more aggressive here, but I think we're well prepared. I do yeah. think that a lot of what they're going to focus on are these uh, taxpayers who are voluntary disclosing with whom they work that they didn't qualify. So they're really like creating um, basically, I, I would suggest evidence for the IRS to look at particular ERC mills if, if some come up more than others. All right. Yeah, the ones that are saying uh, CDC said wear a face yeah. mask that didn't quite qualify <laughs> for a government nope. shutdown, right? It does not. Okay, um, last thing before we move to the final comments, there's a deadline approaching here. Uh, so talk to us about what's coming up with uh, ERC claim yeah. deadline. All right, so there's a couple deadlines coming up. The first is the ending of the moratorium. We don't know exactly when it will happen, but we suspect it will happen sometime around the end of January. So the IRS should begin to process new claims soon. Now, the 2020 credit, you need to file that by 4-15-2024. The 2021 credits, at least right now, the statute of limitations on filing those is 4-15-2025. Um, so if you, I would just say this, if you have, despite all this noise from the IRS and noise from the ERC mills, if you still believe you have a valid claim for 2020 and you haven't looked at it, make sure to get it looked at soon. Feel free to call me or, or anybody else at Cherry Becker. We'll direct it to the team. We can pretty quickly evaluate whether it makes sense to file a uh, amended form 941X for or X is for, for the 2020 period. Um, and I'll, as well, we can look at 2021 and get that in process for you. Awesome, awesome. Okay, let's take it to uh, final comments. So, Marty, the floor is yours. Anything else you'd like to recommend? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would just say, despite the fact that there's a moratorium, 
on processing claims. That doesn't mean that they're not accepting them. Please, if you are a taxpayer considering this, take a look um, and give us a call or, or, or your trusted advisor a call in order to get that filed as quickly as possible. That statute of limitations is approaching and you wouldn't want to get lost in the shuffle considering they're sitting on so many that haven't been processed yet. So my recommendation is to file as quickly as possible if you haven't filed for it yet, and also to file as quickly as possible if you have cashed a check and you don't believe that you qualify for it. So there's two ways to go. Either way, we can help you work with this work with the service. There's a really good way to file electronically for this voluntary disclosure program, whereas you still can't file electronically for an ERC. So they're they're really quick about getting these voluntary disclosures in, but uh, they haven't set up the electronic process yet for for the ERC's uh, original file. All righty, uh, Sarah. Yeah, I think uh, this is fantastic that the IRS has moved to create these programs to help employers get out of a difficult situation that they got themselves in. Uh, and um, an expedient way, particularly the voluntary disclosure program, allowing employers to retain 20 percent of the proceeds or the refund uh, to, to sort of help them be whole in in this and uh, I, I appreciate that from the services standpoint, being reasonable with respect to this, but also sticking to their guns that, hey, this is not a free for all for anybody. We, we do mean business in trying to uh, make sure that those employers who were affected by COVID um, are, are compensated appropriately and did the right things. All right. And I guess I have two comments. One is that a moratorium on processing is not a moratorium on the statute of limitations. Right. So, so I'm trying to say that simply. So that 415 date for 2020 uh, filings is not affected by the moratorium. Uh, and I think that can be very confusing to lay persons. Yep. Uh, and my second comment is that with any really good programs that are kind of short term and there's not well established law, there's always going to be good players and bad players. And I strongly you know, encourage people to find the good players, the good CPAs, the people that are trying to do it right. You can get yourself in trouble real quickly uh, if you try uh, to go with over overly aggressive marketing firms. All right. That's a wrap on this discussion for ERC updates. Thank you for listening in. Quick disclaimer that we are not providing tax advice on this podcast. Please consult with your tax advisor, hopefully at Cherry Becker, with your specific tax issues or to discuss information from today's podcast. Uh, be sure to reach out to Marty if you have any ERC questions. All right, check out the firm's website at cbh.com for the latest guidance and materials on this and other tax and business topics. This concludes today's podcast. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you, Marty. Thank you, our listeners, for spending your time with us. We truly appreciate it. Let's call it a day and go forth in peace.